What's happening with the Ace Pro? It's the beginning of a revolution in the camera market. I could do clear image zoom with the A6700. Yeah. Nevertheless, also on the Ace Pro, I have a digital uh, zoom. Choosing a very powerful sensor, Bayer Quad sensor, which has the possibility to for example, create an HDR image using four pixels at the same time, let's say light rendition uh, values, and then matching them together. And it's really funny because Sony, at least according to Sony rumors, to put those sensors into some of the newer Sony cameras, which did not happen. I don't know if it's possible to combine global shutter concept with the Bayer Quad uh, sensor. Insta360 Ace Pro versus Sony A6700 low light test. Before we dive into the low light test, you see a direct comparison with studio light between the Insta360 Ace Pro and the A6700. Both cameras are running with a shutter speed of 60 slots per second and recording at 4K 30p ISO 320. Not too high, not too low and the white balance is set to 5500 Kelvin on both machines. Two additional values are differing due to the lack of an alternative. One is the f-stop of 2.5 using the Samyang 12 mm AF lens on my A6700 versus the fixed f-stop of 2.6 on the Insta Ace Pro, but this is close enough since I have my teleprompter mounted in front of the Samyang lens, which takes away some light. And by the way, the 12 mm Samyang lens translates to 18 mm here on APS-C, super 35 mm, so to say. To close the quite heavy gap between 16 and 18 millimeters, I'm using the Insta Ace Pro in horizon lock mode, which means the strongest level of additional cropping after action ultra and de-warp mode have been applied. Also, I was moving the cameras around in space a little bit to match them as close as possible. In theory, we should now be closer to somewhere near 18 millimeters full frame equivalent with the Ace Pro by now. Third and last, which cannot be changed, at least by now, Insta promises to offer this possibility in a future firmware update. The Ace Pro is recording in HDR mode as soon as you start to record in standard video mode at 4K 30p. So what you see here is an HDR image versus a classic super high resolution Sony APS-C A6700 or let's even say FX30 image sensor generated picture on the Sony side. Which one do you like more? Please write into the comments. By the way, that's not the end of the story. I could also record HDR using HLG profiles on the Sony A6700. Plus on the A6700, I'm on picture profile 11, which is Sony's cine profile, which I like so much for its color rendering. Still, I thought the colors in the Ace Pro standard profile match best. Here you would see the vivid color, so-called cinematic profile of the Ace Pro. And here is the flat profile, which might anyway be the best. One more, please write in the comments what do you like more? So now finally for the low light comparison. I already did two direct comparisons in German language and in this English spoken video we are going to profit of these. With this video here you get the condensed essence. Focus is a recurring theme throughout the video of the A6700 versus Insta Ace Pro. We learn that Sony was hopelessly overstrained with its focus at the very, very low light using intelligent auto mode. Only starting from the sequences with additional artificial light and then later at higher ISO numbers, the focus is back 
on top. If I had cut out the sequences with the unsightly focus examples to make it look clean, the comparison wouldn't make any sense. Towards the end of the video, we learn in a direct comparison at the higher ISO numbers, the APS-C sensor has the edge over the 1 one third sensor of the ACE Pro in terms of dynamic range, of course. At least that's what I was able to deduce, but I'd rather leave the conclusions to my viewers. If you don't mind the German language in this video, the chapters are also available in English, so you have easy navigation. You will find a link to this video in the video description or just follow the link on the corner up here. So we continue to learn in the eye automatic mode, the ACE Pro clearly has an advantage over the A6700 with its fixed focal length as long as you don't get too close to the lens. Minimum distance is approximately around 40 or 50 centimeters. Well, to fix the focus problem of the ACE Pro, this will be an interesting topic for another video. Conversely, one can only rely on the A6700 in extreme darkness with additional artificial light and manual tweaks. Apropos low light, the Insta ACE Pro is extremely strong in low light compared to the DJI Osmo Action 2. I created another comparison directly between ACE Pro and and Osmo Action 2, which you can find right here. And also in this video, there are time warplings available for direct comparison. Same as mentioned already before, if you don't mind the German language, in this video chapters, there are also English descriptions below the video in the video navigation. That's it as far as my low light experiences go, at least for now. So actually now one more time we are back to the flat color profile. Let me just add one thing. Uh, you know in essence what's happening with the ACE Pro, it's the beginning of uh, a revolution in the camera market. And it's not probably because of Ace Pro or Insta. It's just because they were choosing a very powerful sensor inside the camera. It's a Bayer Quad sensor, which has the possibility to, for example, create an HDR image in life by using four pixels at the same time, interpreting different, uh, let's say, light rendition uh, values and then matching them together to create this kind of rich HDR image, which you see in standard mode at 30p. And it's really funny because Sony, they have these Bayer Quad sensors already out and they were even planning, uh, at least according to Sony rumors, to put those sensors into some of the newer Sony cameras, which did not happen. Now we have a different uh, concept of a sensor in the A9 Mark III, but uh, still no Bayer Quad sensors. And I wonder why Sony is doing it. Maybe they're just holding it back to bring out new cameras later. I mean, they, ha they have this global shutter thing now. And uh, I don't know if it's possible to combine global shutter concept with the Bayer Quad uh, sensor. This Bayer Quad principle is also not exclusive to Ace Pro because you have it in some of the newer uh, cameras out there. I think in some of the um, Samsung uh, smartphones and so forth. Like most of the smartphones which have this super high resolution like 200 pixel on the mini sensor. This is mostly also by a quad principle because then in low lights you have much better performance. There is an additional thing in the ACE Pro, which is of course the AI chip, which can do a second trick. It will basically, before writing the image or the video information to the card, analyze the footage when it's dark and um, obviously also some kind of like, like image noise is then inside and it will kind of like process the image, remove the image noise and then put it on the card, which means the image is somehow artificially being processed before you get it to see and 
this is like so many new things which they're now offering in this Ace Pro. And therefore I think, you know, cameras, they are going to be something completely different in the next decade. They are going to be like, I mean, Sony always, it was never cameras, it was just computers. And now um, the whole world transforms into an artificial intelligence computer thing whatsoever. So it's interesting times we live in. This is something I wanted to add in the end, just spontaneously. Bye bye. See you. See you soon. And follow, click like and write some comments. Thanks.